Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is a really exciting episode for me because we get to focus on crash damage vehicles. Now this is a little known fact. The initial intention for crash and burn was to repair crash damage vehicles like this. So the accident will happen, the crash would happen, Bernie will come along, we'll fix it up, restore it to like new condition. And that's what's gonna happen in this Jetta. But the twist is, it's gonna happen in 24 hours or less. So watch me work. This is a 2012 Volkswagen Jetta. It has a 2.5 liter five cylinder. And besides Hondas, Toyotas, and some Fords, I recommend these as the car to get if you're looking for cheap, reliable transportation. Now this car is in the family. This is my sister's car. Unfortunately, she did get into a bit of an accident. Everybody's okay. It happened a while ago. But we need to be able to fix this car and get it back on the road because sitting does no good for cars. All of the accident is contained right in this area. We have the wheel that was pushed back into the fender well. So we're thinking that there is some lower control arm damage there. We'll see once we get underneath there. We have the hood, the fender, the bumper, the inner wheel well, and the headlight as some of the major damage that we're seeing right off the bat. Hopefully our hood hinges are aligned. The gap looks a little funky here, but by and large, everything opens Hopefully it runs, we'll take a look in a second, and just kind of assess the damage. So my order of operations is get the vehicle rolling, because right now, with that wheel into the fender, I can't roll it, right? So I want to fix the suspension damage first. Then I want to tear down the bodywork, see what's really to it, make sure there's no frame or apron damage behind the fender there, get everything torn apart get our replacement parts out, make sure everything fits and looks good, then we'll get everything painted in looking like brand new. If this is the type of content that you like, remember to like, share, subscribe, and leave a comment. Let me know what you think of this. If you do like it, we'll get some more on the channel too. But with only 24 hours to go, I really need to get to work on this. Thankfully, I did pre-purchase parts. I do think I have everything. I don't have any time for surprises if I wanna make this deadline. So let's get this wheel off. We'll get the car stripped down, take a closer look at the suspension damage. All right, fighting off that wheel was a bear. Thankfully, we were able to get it off. And then take a look at that. That is really serious. You gotta replace that rim. The tire still looks good though. It's got some really good thread left on it. I don't see any punctures or anything like that. So we'll try to save that. Coming in here. Let's see what I can see. Yeah, that tie rod, <laughs> that looks really bent. You guys know that should be straight. So that's a problem. Hmm, look at that lower control arm. That. It's got a twist and a bend coming up. So we're gonna need to replace that as well. I think those are the three things we need to do to get this car able to run and drive right into the garage. Lower control arm, tie rod, and wheel. So let's get at it. So regarding this lower control arm, as you can see, here's where the bend took place. We can see that plain as day now that we're down here. And unfortunately, this is the harder side to take off because that front bolt that's right here, when you loosen it, it goes right into the oil pan for the transmission. So bad design. If you have a manual transmission, you don't have to worry about that, but on the autos you do. So here is my cheat code for getting that. Yeah, the last thing I wanna do is have to drop this entire assembly. But if you look right here, you'll see that dog bone mount, that torque arm, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen two of the bolts, one right here and one right here, to give the engine and transmission free play going this way. That should be enough for me to pry the transmission forward enough to clear the removal of that bolt. Let's try it in action. Thank you. 
Did you see the amount of movement that that engine had once you released that second bolt? Crazy, right? Okay, let's take a look at that again from this angle. Yeah, that's good. I have some reservations about it being enough, but we'll give it a shot. All right, so I had a really awkward time trying to get it out, but I did. And it was at the help of doing this, getting it all the way out using this jack and it worked. So let's continue on. All right, so we got the replacement one in there, getting ready to zip it up, but I wanna be able to get this tie rod end taken care of because as you remember, we got that really big bend here. So I ripped the boot off, I got a replacement one. I've gotten this set nut off, but I'm having trouble getting this off. So once it gets to the point where all of that Loctite jumbles up, the ball is spinning with the nut. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push this all the way down, expose the threads, and I'm gonna take a cutter and just zip in there, make sure I don't get the knuckle any, and then just tear that off and then be able to lift it up. You can use a pickle fork if you don't have one of those and then just hammer it in and then use the tension that the pickle fork gives to start to spin the nut back off. But I'm just going to cut it. Yep, nice and easy. So we got that out of the way, we can remove the inner and then we'll replace the inner, outer, and boot. In case you're in a quick jam and you don't have one of these tools to remove it, what you can do is take a large vice grip, get some tension on it, and then take the handle of your jack and put it on this part for extra leverage. I use this really long bolt to help with some leverage, but add the pipe, it'll give you additional leverage, and then you can unscrew it just like that. All right, now I got a jack underneath the control arm just to put tension on it because you want it at ride height and level before you start to screw in the bolts. Otherwise you'll rip and tear your, your bushings. So now we'll be able to torque everything to spec now that we've gotten the, the level right. In order to get your alignment close, you want to count the amount of thread that you have before the jam nut. And I counted 18 on the right side. So I spun 18 on this side just to match. All right, so we are three hours in and we've got our lower control arm on, we've got our inner and outer tie rod with boot on, and we've got our alignment semi-mocked up. Looking back, taking a look at the rotor, it looks pretty parallel with the front of the car. So I'm gonna call that good. We'll still need a formal alignment because we did change suspension components, but this will get us to the alignment shop just fine. Now, I need to see if this engine starts and runs just fine. It did after the accident, so it should be good to go, but it has been sitting for a few months. I've gotten the battery charged up, so we'll start it up and see what we get. All right, sounds like we're a little bit low on power steering fluid. We did have uh, some engine rattle, but that's consistent with not being ran for a few months. I feel like we're in good shape. So what's next is we'll start to tear apart the fender. We'll take off the bumper and the headlight, inspect for damage, and then move on. We know we need to replace those three components at least. So here we are, we got the bumper off, we got all of the other stuff off, and this gives us a really good chance to inspect the damage. Things are looking really good here. I was a little concerned on that impact strip because I did see it poke through the bumper, but we're looking good there. There is, I need to bend this back up because that's supposed to be vertical. 
This is a adjustment screw for the headlight. The apron looks perfectly fine, no issues there. I did see a power steering line burst. So this is the cause of our leak and we can fix that, that's no problem. We just gotta replace that line. It looks like it goes from here all the way to the bottom of the reservoir. Hopefully I can find that used. If not, dealership, I doubt they'll have it same day, so. Now it's getting late in the evening. It's probably about 5, 5.30 right now. I don't want her to know that I'm actually working on this car until I'm totally done. So, whenever she drives up, she's gonna be driving with a friend. I'm gonna turn the car around, have it facing back. Hopefully that doesn't alert her to something being wrong. Because if it's totally gone, then that's for sure gonna let her know something's up. But what I'll do is I'll kind of block, block the front of the car in with a couple of these other cars. So hopefully she won't notice. I tried to unclip this uh, hood cable joining bracket and this looks like it's uh, sustained a little bit of damage. So I'm gonna get a replacement one of that. It's supposed to clip onto the back of here and that works fine, but this is gonna create issues for when I try to pop the hood moving forward. So I'll gingerly clip in the hood. I won't totally shut it. Okay, this is really noticeable, and she's super observant, so she's gonna catch this. Um, I may have a car cover that's just the right size, so I'll use that. We can move the Audi over and cover it. We can get the Dodge covered as well, and then we can start to paint prep the replacement parts for this car. That way in the morning, we only have to worry about the hood and reassemble. All right, so we moved inside. Things are getting a little dark and cold outside, so now we're going to do some bumper and fender prep. Let me show you what we got. I've gotten plastic sheathing down on the floor. I'm gonna turn this lift into my makeshift paint booth. It'll be a little tight, but it should work. I got my 2012 bumper here and my fender over there. And these will be the two parts that we paint inside. For prep purposes, we've got a bucket of soapy water, a Scotch-Brite pad, fine grit, couple of microfiber towels and then everything we need to paint. I'm rocking the 899 Harbor Freight gun. It's 899 right now on special for Black Friday. Hopefully this video gets out before it ends. We've got primer sealer, base coat and clear coat. Moisture filter and a second filter down in here pressure regulator. And here's what the gun looks like. It feels really good quality, but note, when they come out of the box, they have oil on them from the manufacturing and storing process. So you got to clean everything up with acetone, break the gun down, clean it up, put it back together before you spray anything out of the gun. In addition to everything you've seen so far, we've gotten filters and cups and gloves. So everything we need to get started. Of course, I got my shop compressor in the corner. It's a 26 gallon, 4.6 CFM, and it should be good enough for what we're trying to do. You just take your time and everything will be fine. I got a second tank for just for air storage, so that also helps me out in case my compressor gets winded. We're gonna start to scuff this right now with my fine grit uh, Scotch-Brite pad. Just create some bite on these panels and then we'll get it cleaned up and ready for primer.
All right, so we got our gun clean. Everything is looking great there. And just take a look at the oil that was in there before. This was gonna go into your paint job and contaminate it if you didn't clean it out, so. Glad we got that taken care of. I've done a couple of paint jobs with this moisture filter, so it's time for it to be swapped out. They're only a few bucks at Harbor Freight, so they're totally disposable. We'll swap it out to this one, and then we'll be good to go. I'm gonna throw a little Teflon tape on here. They're known to leak. Here we are. Filter one, filter two, regulator, gun. Welcome to my makeshift paint booth. Got the tarp on out here and I've got all the parts in down here. So I'll just set up the camera in this corner and I'll get to work. You won't see me mix up future paint because I'm just gonna keep the camera in here and rip and run. Doing primer sealer first, then base coat, then clear coat. I'm gonna put some more light in here first before I start because it's really difficult to see everything and Seeing is believing, so let's get to it. So it's the next day, everything sprayed down really well. We have three hours left that we need to use to assemble the car and then should be all set. Yeah, what do you think? I like it a lot. I like the smoked look, especially with the midnight blue color. I feel like it's going to be attention grabbing. So just some little cues to make the Jetta stand out. It's a really nice car, it's a beautiful color, so I think this, was, this will really set it apart. I should have opted for LEDs. That would have really spiced things up, but I don't know. Always next time. Let's get these installed. <laughs> So we have about an hour left and the final thing that needs to go on is the bumper. Now I have to take off all of the trim and the license plate bracket off of the old one, transplant it to the new one, and then get everything reattached. Quick eyes may have caught it, but on the time lapse, I did replace the upper bumper bracket and this uh, fender retention bracket as well. This one is really bent. So I painted the new one when I did the fender and the bumper and everything looks to be ready to go.
Here it is, the Jetta is all put back together. I'm really liking the new headlights. It really wakens up the look of it. It makes it look a little sinister. And that's exactly what I wanted out of this thing. So hopefully she enjoys it. She can get back on the road safely. There is some more stuff to do on there. I didn't do the hood. There's some marks on the other side of the fender that could use some, some paint work, but the big stuff is taken care of. She can get back on the road and do it safely, which is the whole point of this. Overall, I am really happy with this. The only thing is I did not expect that hood cable bracket to need to be replaced, so I can't shut the hood all the way. So unfortunately, it's gonna have to stay cracked like this for a few more days. And because it's Sunday, no dealerships are open. I can't get it, so I can't shut the hood just yet, but I can still admire it. It looks really, really good. I'm falling in love with this blue all over again. I don't have any blue cars. I was concerned that blue would be a difficult color to paint. Um, it was not. I think I had some good success with this. Thankfully, everything laid down really well. And overall, I couldn't be more pleased with the outcome. Okay, here she comes. She's on the phone, even better. Out of here. Mm -hmm. See you later. Have Bye. fun. Well, something good? good? No, it's fine. For some what? Oh, sure. Wait, what are you doing there? I don't know. Oh my gosh! Why? I'm so unobserved. <laughs> I'm over here like... Oh, like, bye. You had a really like, nice smile on him. Yeah, like, I was just, I was like, oh, bro, I'm just smiling <laughs> over there. I'm just like, go give him a hug. Like, I didn't even notice. Oh, my gosh. You almost look like... Huh? Yeah, 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 I, I was just smiling because he was smiling. Heart. But I didn't even... I'm so unobservant. I always say people really can never surprise me, but I'm really unaware. <laughs> oh my god, it looks so good. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I'm just looking at her like, wow, like you don't have a chunk out of you anymore. Nah. Right? Wait, wait, this You're is really impressive. Boy. Yeah, like I can't even it looks better than beforehand. Well you got um brand new headlights. They're smoked, so Yeah, I'm over here black. looking like something looked there different. is different. Yeah. I knew something was different, like it looks so good. Are good luck. Yeah. Matching with her. <laughs> He's just yeah. matching. <laughs> I'm gonna take a picture of you both. Oh. Three, two, one. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, there it is. Another successful mission. Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Talk to you in the next episode.